firstly, I'd like to thank you all for uh, the opportunity to present to you um, uh, and my thoughts on the future of the workplace and JLL's uh, approach to reimagining the future of the workplace. Obviously, COVID-19 has changed the way many people think about the workplace of the future and what the office of the future is going to be like, what's its purpose. And um, I'll be talking a bit about that. Um, some of you are already aware that the JLL is a, um, has a strategic partnership with IBM. We deliver FM services uh, across a, a wide geography uh, to IBM. Um, so that's that relationship. Uh, and I myself am also a former IBMer. I used to work for IBM UK in global business services uh, some time ago. Uh, and a great experience that was. So let's talk a bit about the, the office of the future. Uh, and what that means and what the trends are looking like. And to understand the future, I think it's uh, always good to kind of get a sense of where we've come from. And this, uh, these couple of sketches here kind of show where we were and where we are. Um, and in the past, it used to be a case of uh, everybody had an assigned desk. So here in this little sketch here, we see 16 workstations and 16 people. Each one would have an assigned workstation. So whether these guys came into the office or not, they had a desk in the office. And occupancy levels varied from business to business and, and, and business unit to business unit, in fact. Um, so you might get maybe 80% occupancy or 70%. And sometimes I even measured 60% or 55%. So you'd have a lot of empty seats in workstation, uh, uh, empty seats in offices or empty workstations in offices for which people are paying rent, uh, utilities. Uh, and of course, in this world of sustainability, that's a lot of waste um, from an environmental perspective, but it's also financial waste. It's a, a drain on the corporate resources why pay for empty space to build, maintain, operate it. So um, the great release, if you like, like, came from the availability of technology. Laptops, mobile phones allowed people to be more flexible in the office. And they hit upon the idea that if we don't have to have a desk of our own, then why should all the desks be the same? And, and that's the basis of activity-based working. So what we're seeing here in this sketch is a kind of conversion. We've got some traditional workstations just as we had before, but we have a, a team table for collaboration. We have spaces where we can go and focus and concentrate. And we have maybe a more informal workspace, a bit more like a coffee shop where you can hang out. And some people thrive. A more extrovert person may thrive in this kind of environment, whereas an introvert may th thrive in this. But even once in a while, the extrovert does need to batten down the hatches, focus and concentrate and deliver that report by 6 p.m. uninterrupted. But they also, everybody needs to collaborate once in a while. So this activity-based workstation, uh, work environment, allows people to, uh, to be more fluid in the way they work, um, be more efficient and effective in the way they work because they can choose how they work. Uh, and they're liberated because they have mobile technology, which also means that without being anchored to a desk, we can actually base more people in the office at any given time. Remember that if only, say, 70 or 80 percent of the seats are occupied, that leaves 30 percent that could still be occupied. So we can allow more people to be based from the same office environment um, without having to assign them workstations. So that's kind of where we are today with many of the more progressive organizations. Um, but where does this go next? COVID-19 has resulted in, in quite a significant change in people's uh, behaviors. They're forced to work remotely, and that usually means working from home, which means you can actually hire as many people as you like, and you're really not concerned about those four walls. So what is the reason to come back to the office? Um, is it going to be to concentrate because you can't do that at home because for maybe your personal circumstances mean you've got screaming kids, you've got pets, you've got uh, the, the, the mother-in-law who keeps offering you um, uh, cup, cups of coffee or lunch or what have you, interrupting you all the time. Um, maybe it's because you have a need to network, to socialize, maybe going back to those introverts, or maybe it's the kind of sales business that you're in. You need to see the people uh, you work with, you need to socialize, interact. Sometimes for some, it's also, um, if you like, a, oh, a question of well-being to be able to interact with your colleagues and your peers. So we create a social club. For some, they think it's still about collaboration. You need to be able to collaborate with your people in the same space. I'm skeptical about that one, because even if you have an AB team uh, in your organization at the moment because of COVID, um, if the A team has to collaborate with the B team, then where's the B team? The B team's at home and the A team's in the office. And if it's if some people are at home and someone in the office, you're going to have to be uh, collaborating via um, video comp conferencing or, or electronic medium uh, in some way. So the fact that there's a bunch of people in a meeting room doesn't mean you need the meeting room because if you're in the office, you'll, you might just as well sit at your desk because half the people are in, at, at home. You can't be using that, that whiteboard in, in the meeting room. You're going to need to use an electronic whiteboard. So I'm, I'm very skeptical about that. 
but I think these two uh, these two areas are the ones that are going to see the most requirement. So probably some hybrid solution is what we're looking at. Uh, one where people can come and socialize or concentrate and do all the things that they could not do uh, at home uh, or in their homework environment. Um, but at some point that office space will be full and there are apps out there already saying, don't come to the office, the seats are all taken, you need to keep your social distancing. Or indeed when the next pandemic hits, people will be back working from home. So. Um, I think what we'll find is, is we're going to change the way we view the office. It could be something social, it could be something for concentration, particularly when you have, for example, new joiners uh, coming to the company. Uh, you've got a fresh graduate and say, come, to the, come and work for us, uh, stay at home. Uh, that person is not going to have a chance to, to get familiar with the culture. They're not going to have a chance to learn the ropes firsthand from, from their manager and their mentor, meet them face to face. Um, so back to the club, that's where the club function may come in. And if that young graduate is in a flat chair with five other people, they might well need to come and, and work uh, in a place they can concentrate um, as long as they can do so responsibly or if they can work from, from home or remotely in some way responsibly, that also works. But the question is, what is that office for? And I think it's for those things that you cannot do uh, at home or when you're working remotely. And those things may be as simple as getting social productivity, cultural productivity or individual productivity, stuff that uh, un, depending on your circumstances, you can't do elsewhere. So in a kind of fancier graphic, uh, organizations that may be conservative, intermediate, or, or more social may take a different view. And we're on a learning journey. Those organizations that are more conservative will still have space that looks maybe more traditional. Um, some are gonna be experimental with their spaces and, and hazard uh, a few areas. And we're seeing this now happening. A lot are talking about this, but the question of how brave they are to go down this route is, is still open to discussion. How, what this mixture of, of space settings is going to be um, is still up for debate. But we are seeing a number of organizations, particularly in the financial services sector, cutting their footprint radically and mandating about 50% of their people to work remotely uh, from the get-go. That's it. From now on, we are taking out 50% of our floor plates and half of you must work from home on any given day. We'll work out the policies, we'll work out the space, but a couple of organizations are even just taking out one floor straight away and reduce cost, reduce cost, reduce cost, and then figure out whether we're going to be more intermediate or more social with whatever space is left. So the future really depends on, on your starting point, uh, on where you are today. Um, whether you're going to be progressive depends on, on what your situation today is. Progressive may be different for some, orga for some organizations compared to others. Um, uh, but I think uh, we're certainly going to see in the next few years the footprints changing quite radically. So I think that's uh, the sort of summary of um, where I think the workplace is going in the future.